Hey guys, and welcome back to another Mansion 4 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a hard landing or a hard falling animation. So, if you fall from a certain height, or if your player is falling at a certain speed, what's going to happen is when they land, they're going to play a different animation instead of just suddenly landing. So, I'll show you what this thing look like. So, if I just go up this quick elevator that I've made, you can see that when I fall, I've also got a print string to tell me when I've achieved this certain speed for to create that hard falling animation. So, you don't need to be this high, this is just for a demonstration. So if I'm falling off, you see I've reached that speed, hard fall, I land, and I've got this hard fall animation there. And now we can just walk about again. So that works perfectly. So I'll show you that one more time, and then we'll get into making it. So if I go up here, and if I fall from here as well, this should still work. So I've still got a bit up. And there you go. We've now got it. So that works perfectly. So like I say, I'll be showing you how to do this now. But before we get into the rest of it, this video is actually sponsored by Galsad, Galactic Salvage and Disposal. Galsad is an arcade style space flight game where the player blasts space debris, harvests energy and mines valuable ore from treasure rocks in order to score points. The developer was also kind enough to give me a free steam key, so I have played it, and in my honest opinion, I love it. I think it's great, and the fact that everyone's results are tracked on the leaderboard gives it that extra competitive and fun edge to it. The game is also a very cheap 99 cents on Steam, or 75 pence depending on where you're from, but it is cheap and great. The developer is also one of you, someone who learned from these videos that I'm making, and so this is very possible for you to do, so I definitely recommend checking it out and also supporting them, as like I say, this is someone just like you. So thanks so much Galsad for sponsoring this video, and make sure to follow the link in the description down below to go to their Steam store page. So our first step is you're going to want to import the animations that we're using. So this is just a quick one that I got off mix mode and retargeted to the UE4 mannequin. So it looks like this. So once you've imported that, so by just dragging and dropping it in, you can right click on it, create, create and in montage as we're going to be doing this via animation montages. Hit enter and there you go. We now have that there. Now you can open this up and change the rate scale if you want. So that's just how quick it is. So you set on two, it's a lot quicker like that. But I just want it as one as that's a good speed for me. So I'm going to save and close that. Then next, what we're going to do is we're just going to open up our character blueprint, as that is basically where we're doing all of this code. So for me, that's content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character, but for you, this could be third, first, or whatever you've named it. So what you're going to do is you're just going to find some space, so I think down here will be good for me, and I'm just going to right click, and I'm going to get event on movement mode changed. So when our movement mode changes, we're going to call this function. So out of the new movement mode, I'm going to come out of this and get an equal enum, so equal enum down here, and this is going to be falling. So if we are falling, we then obviously want to play the animation when we land. So we'll come out of falling, hold down B, left click to get a branch, plug the condition of that in there. And actually just before this branch we'll get a sequence, so hold on S, left click to get a sequence, and then connect those up like that. Sequence is something we're going to be using later. Actually I'll move that like so. So that's just so we are prepared for it. After this, what we want to do is we just basically want to see what speed the player is falling at. So to do that, we're going to right click and we're going to get velocity. So get velocity like that it should be from the very bottom there. And then we're going to right click on the return value and split the structure pin, as we only want to see the player speed on the z axes. So we're going to come out of the return value of the z and we're going to get a less than or equal to. Float is less than or equal to a float. And the reason we're doing less than is because this is going to be a minus number as we're falling down, it will be minus. So obviously when it's in minus, the number's getting bigger, it's getting closer to zero. But obviously we want to be getting further away from zero, so it needs to be less than. And then the value I'm going to put in here is minus 1500, but you can set this to be whatever you like. Now a good way to test this out is to right click and just get the event tick node. Out of the execution of that, we're going to get a print string. The in string is just going to be this return value z there. Now if we compile and play it, we can see up in the top left what speed the player is going to be falling at. So if we fall off of here and jump, we're going to get to about minus 800. So this is why I've set it to minus 1500. So it's not from a height like this, but it would be something like this. So obviously that's quite high. That reached minus 2200. So minus 2200 was from that height. So like I say, I think minus 1500 is good for me, but you can change that to be whatever you like. So I'm just going to delete that as I know what value I want. Out of this, I'm going to hold down B, left click to get another branch. Plugging that into the true of the first condition is obviously this less than or equal to. So if our new movement mode is falling, we then want to check to see what the player's speed is on the Z, so to see if they're falling. If it is less than this number, so if they're falling at that speed or greater than that speed, so obviously it's less than because it's a minus number, but we're going to say greater than. So if it is like that, we want to make sure that we are going to have a hard fall. So we're going to hit the plus variable and call this hard landing or hard fall, question mark, anything like that. Plug that into the true 
and set it to true. So if the player is falling faster than this, downwards, they're going to land hard. If they're not falling faster than that, we'll hold on D, left click to get a delay, leaving it as 0 0.2, and we're just going to then call this a function again. So as long as the player is falling, we're going to constantly check their speed to see if we need to have a hard fall. As soon as they stop falling, it'll come out false, so it will no longer call this. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to right click up here, get a custom event, and call this check speed. And I'm just going to plug that into the first branch there. Then back down here after this delay, we're going to call function check speed. And that is that part done. So like I say, when we first change our movement mode, it's going to check if it's falling. If it is, it's going to check the player's speed falling downwards. If that is greater than the speed we want, it's going to set that to be true. So we have a hard falling. If it's not, it's going to constantly check to see if the speed does get above that until we land. And if we land, it will go out false, so it won't check this anymore. And then if it does reach that speed, it will come up here, so it won't call the function again. So this is only going to do this loop for however long we need it to. So now what we want to do is we've got it set up to determine when we need to have the hard fall animation. Now we just need to actually play it. So to do that, we're going to come off of this sequence here and do it down here. So what we'll do first is come out of new movement mode, get another equal enum like that. This time it's going to be walking. So when we go back to our walking mode, which is obviously when we've landed, out of this return value, what we're going to do is we're going to get an AND boolean. This other one is going to be hard landing. So if our new movement mode is walking and we want to have a hard landing, then it's going to play the animation. So hold down B, left click to get a branch, plug that in there, and that's just going to simply check to see if both of those are true, then connect that to the then one of this sequence up here, like so. Out of false, we're not going to do anything, as obviously it's fine then, we don't need it to do anything, but out of true, we want to play this animation. So what we're going to do is we're going to come out of true and we're going to disable input, or actually disable movement. So we'll get the character movement here, drag out of this and disable movement. And the reason we're doing this is because when the player is having that hard landing, we don't want them to be able to move around as well as that won't look good in the animation. And it's also not as realistic. So we're just going to stop them and prevent them from moving. And then once the animation is finished, we'll let them move again. Out of this, what we're going to do is we're going to play an in montage. So play an in montage like that with the anim montage as our hard landing montage that we made earlier. So that way it's going to play that. Out of the execution of this, we're going to set hard landing to be false. So that means that the next time we go into the walking movement mode, it isn't going to play this animation again. It will only do it when it gets set back to true here, which is obviously if we're falling at that speed. Out of this, we're going to come out the return value of the play and montage and get a delay. So delay like so. Out of the completed of this, we're just going to set the movement mode again. So we'll come out the character movement here, I'll just come up here and get a reroute node like that. And then out of this, I will set movement mode and I'll set it back to walking. So change new movement mode to walking. And now when you do that, it will fire off this line again. But because we've set hard landing to be false, it won't do this again. So that will now work perfectly. So we've set it up to check when we need to have the animation play. And this is actually playing the animation. So now if we compile, save, there's one final step we need to do, which is actually to allow our player and our animations, our character to play this animation here. So we can just close that and then open up our animation blueprint. So for me, that's content, mannequin, animations, third person, and in BP. In here, you just want to go back to the anim graph here. So you might be in the state machine. So just press anim graph up at the top there. Out of this default state machine, we're just going to get a slot, default slot. And all that does is it just allows the use of animation montages. So if we compile, save, close that. We should see this working. So if we hit play to test it, I'm going to go up on this elevator that I made here just to test all this out. Once I get to the top, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump off. And you can see when we land, we should have that hard falling animation like so. So that works perfectly. And now if I just fall off of this or jump off of this, we're not going to have that animation. It will just land normally as obviously we don't want it to hit there. Now, if you think that it plays the animation from too small of a gap, too small of a height, or whatever, so you jump off of something and it plays it when you don't, you're just going to increase that speed value that we made in the blueprint here. So if we open it back up again, you see you would just change this value. You just increase that to get it to be a higher gap. So they have to be falling at a faster and a greater speed. So I think I'll be it for this video is we've done everything we wanted to do. We set it up so that if we fall from a certain height and we reach a certain speed, it's going to play an animation. So you see from that, it didn't do anything. But if we go all the way up here, it's going to play that speed. And now I don't need to go this high, but I'm just doing it for testing. So if I jump off of here, you can see that when I land and hit the floor, we're going to get that hard falling animation there. So it just makes it a lot more realistic. Now, obviously, from that height, you'd probably want to kill the player and have full damage. But for this one, I'm just showing you how to have 
that hard landing animation like so and that works perfectly like that. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.